Everyone, welcome to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. As always, appreciate everybody joining us here live every weekday at 1 p.m. <laughs> Pacific. We are live streaming on our website, on our apps, and on Facebook and YouTube. And if you're on one of those two, you can drop in questions. And I bet we're going to have some today because uh, it is a special day here. It's not often that I have a guest here at the desk, let alone a wrestling legend. And that's who's with me right now. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on here, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. And as it says, it's Lenny Denton, a.k.a. The Grappler. <laughs> the Grappler. The yes, Grappler. Yeah. I, have, I don't know if I'm giving that the right voice for it. but Yeah, no, you got it down. Okay, that's good. <laughs> well, Lenny, it is so great to have you here. And a huge thanks to, to Joe V for, for setting this up, too. And Brother, if it wasn't for Joe V, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, writing that book. Everybody in the world likes that book. It, it's and an what a great book. book. You like I've it? I've read the book. I love it, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic book, and it just tells, you know, your amazing history in wrestling just not only here in the Northwest, not only in Portland, which obviously, you know, is such a staple for here. And I don't know if, if people don't realize that Portland wrestling has been around for a very long Ooh. time, was around for a very long time in Pacific Northwest wrestling and all of that. And you were like an, an integral part of that. You know, when I first came to Portland wrestling, I'd been wrestling all over the country already. And I'd been in these big coliseums and arenas all over. And I pull up to Portland wrestling and I, I, I'm looking now, all I've heard is about Don Owens and Portland wrestling, and all the greats came out of here, and it's a big bowling alley. I went, what? <laughs> That's where they were wrestling at? What a mistake I made. But you know what? Here's the thing people don't understand. Once I got in that bowling alley, and I, and all that, that atmosphere and those people and the crow's nest and Don Coss and Don Owens and brother, I, I loved it. I fell in love with it. I, I'm so glad that made my career. I loved it. I, mean, I really enjoyed wrestling there more than anywhere in the country. What do you think it is yeah. about here in Portland and the Northwest that, that – People love wrestling. It's so like the guys come, and a lot of guys come, and they ain't got the big name already, like Nationwide or nothing, like Piper did, mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Snuka, guys like that. Yeah, um, that's why. They come in, the people are kind of like rooting for them, get behind them and watch them grow. So it's like a family thing, and their kids grow up. And the one thing they love, they come out, they can see themselves on TV when they go home uh -huh. to watch wrestling. So it was a great, a great thing, like an institution with it. With the people of Oregon, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, love they, they support. It's part of the community. On Channel 12 TV, yeah. Channel 12 TV, yes, right sir, here, brother. which that's, that, <laughs> absolutely, uh, which is why it's so great, you know, having you here on Fox 12 now, too, you know, after bringing it back here to, to Channel 12. But, um, you know, you mentioned your career and, yeah. and all those places that you wrestled, and you wrestled in arenas, you wrestled in a bowling alley. Everywhere, you know, you wrestled everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Sumo Palace in Japan and then back to the bowling alley. And, <laughs> I mean, how, how long was your career? I did well. Let's see. I broke in in '77. '77. Okay, and and I still manage guys. So I don't know. That's around 46 years. But yeah, full time wrestling, I'd say probably at least close to 30 years. Wow. Yeah, full time before the injuries. I said, oh, I can't go no more. Which now, I can imagine. I mean, well, I had to tall. replace vertebrae and all this, and they go, well, you can go ahead and take those falls, grappler. That's what the doctor and surgeon says. That's fine, but if, this time you probably won't get up. <laughs> he said, if you do, you'll be a paraplegian. I went, well, eh, it's time to start yeah, managing. Yeah, maybe that's a, and back up a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, just back up a little bit. Well, with all that risk, you know, for injury and, and the touring and the travel and the toll it takes, what is it about it that, that really drew you in that made you, know, you love it to keep doing that? It just gets, it's like, in it's something, here's what it was. I wanted to be a pro baseball player, you know, and I, really? but I had to work hard to get the, the scouts to even look at me and all this, but in wrestling... I went out there and I, I could accidentally do good. I don't know why. I had a knack for it. And then once you get out there, you hear the roar of the crowd and the smell of the popcorn and all the stuff that goes with it and the camaraderie with the guys in the dress room and on the road, all those road stories, you know, that mm -hmm. I tell. It just starts to get in your blood, brother, and you can't get out of it. I mean, it's like, what am I going back and be a carpenter now? Right. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's already in your blood. Yeah, yeah I got to get on there and tell the people I'm the grappler or yeah. whatever you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, just in your blood. And you, it's like it's like being in showbiz. You can't get it out. You know yeah, I mean? well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... that's why I've got that show. Like, that's the reason I'm doing the stand up now. Yep. Over over at the Hawthorne Hideaway. Yeah. This Saturday because like I can't get in there and wrestle no more. But you know what? I created a one man show and me and Roddy Piper kind of did that together. And then, it, God bless him, he passed away. So I continued on. 
and I do that one man show so I can still like, get out there in front of the crowd and feel that feeling of those people listen to those stories. I love it, you know, love doing that. And and I want to talk all about that too because you mentioned it. I've got it uh, right there. We're going to Hawthorne Hideaway that's yeah. Saturday, November 18th. Yes, sir. Is when you're going to be there. But you mentioned a couple of things the camaraderie, you know, sure. traveling with all the guys sure. and, and telling some of those stories. Joe brought it up to me here before we went on air. One of the stories, and I, I would love, I would love it if we could hear about okay, it. Okay, yeah. Something about driving Ric Flair around. <laughs> okay, Joe V knows a lot, just about all my stories. <laughs> but this one here, he, he liked the okay, so, case. <laughs> but here's what it was. I was, I was just still trying to get a break. I was Greenhorn, they call it. I think I was 19 years old, and I was in the Mid Atlantic Territory for the Crockets. And, you know, they went to North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina, all over the place. Big territory. You had to drive all these shows and drive back. Right? Well, Flair was the main event. This is before he got the world belt. And so he was like the top main event in the territory. And uh, so everywhere he went was sold out. And so he, would, he had a Cadillac and he had a brand new Lincoln. But he got so many speeding tickets, he lost his driver license. <laughs> so we're at TV one night in Raleigh, and the Crockett's go, Here's like four, 10 of us guys are all rookies. He goes, find you a driver. Why Flair picked me, I have no idea, but thank God he did. We got to be real good buddies. And, you know, you can imagine this guy's there grooming him for the world title. Yeah. And so he wrestles all the greats, Charlie Rays, the Funks, everybody, the Funks, everybody all over the nation every other night, right? Yeah. Or every night. And so now I'm listening to him, and we get in the car on the way home. Hey, Rick, how, tell me how to do this interview. Tell me how to do that interview. What did I say on this? Hey, how did I handle this match? And all that education yeah. I was getting. And I tell you what really wasn't too bad was at the end of the night, you know, he would take care of the rooms, he'd take care of the gas, all the drinks, and all the pretty ladies. And he had plenty <laughs> of them every night. He ain't lying. Rick Flair. He was the nature boy, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> It was one of the greatest <laughs> years I ever had in, in wrestling. Yeah. With I mean, Rick Flair sounds, running around. Sounds like living the dream. I, I learned a lot, too. Uh, <laughs> I bet. So. <laughs> on both sides. On both sides, okay? <laughs> yeah. Tell about the fight with the flat tire. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so this is this. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. We're going, we're going along in the flare. So I'm driving a flare. But here's the thing. I didn't have no Lincoln, and I didn't have yeah. no Cadillac. I had a Ford LTD, too. Uh -huh. So he had to ride with me. He said he didn't, want, he didn't want to take his Lincoln on the road and all that and have me drive it and wreck it. So I said, I'll <laughs> ride with you. So we went to an, uh, it was an Army base somewhere out there. And so we get out, and, you know, Flair's got his robe and he's got his Halliburton briefcase and he's wearing his suit. And we get out and we go in this armory, all these uh, Army guys, and we wrestle and we come back. And I open the trunk and he puts stuff in. And these Army guys go, man, what happened to the nature boy? Where's all the, we're not, we're not a spot show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where's the nature boy? Where's all the pretty women? Where's the Lincoln, the, the limos, the diamond rings? You ain't you a bunch of big old phony, you fake. But when they said that, Flair looked at him and said, what would you say? Nobody calls me. They said, I'll tell you what, hot shots. There's like four or five. Get in your car and follow us off the base. We'll settle this. <laughs> But okay, so they get in there and they jump in the car and they're falling us off the base. I'm like, it's just me and Rick. Yeah. I said, I maybe can handle one or two, and there's like five or six of these guys. Yeah. Rick says, I don't care. Pull it over. We're taking care of them. And just as I hit the feeder road to go on the, uh, uh, head for the freeway, all of a sudden I, that LTD2 had a blowout. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Them guys are behind us, and they stop, and they're looking at us, and Rick's so mad. He goes, what happened? I said, then we had a blowout. He jumps out, and those guys drive out and they're throwing beer cans at us. <laughs> Flair threw his, his uh, sports coat on the ground. He's screaming, wanting to come back, and they go by laughing at us two or three times. I'm out there changing the tire. You know what <laughs> I mean? And so, beer cans at yeah, you. yeah, throwing beer cans. Flair was so mad. He come out through garbage at us. <laughs> he was so mad, you know, and I said, well, you know something that taught him a lesson? Never, if you're a world champion, never ride in a Ford LTD, too. <laughs> in one of your shows. But the, after that, he said, hey, of course, he told me the next day, we'll get four brand new tires. I got it. Took care of the bill. That's the way he was. But it was, <laughs> wow. was a, well, I thought we were going to have a big fight and it never did happen. Thank God for the blowout. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, <laughs> right? Flair and the Grappler on the side of a, mm -hmm. I don't know, that could be a pay-per-view of it right there. Yep. Uh, so, so, you know, with, with that, you know, with, with all this touring around and everything like that and talking about the Grappler. Yes. I mean, I see what you have in your hand right here. Yeah. And we have people who are asking questions, too. So I've got okay. a couple more yeah, questions yeah. for some stories. Uh, one of them was, uh, can someone, can you ask the grappler about the Jake the Snake DDT story? Sure, sure. Everybody wants to know how, okay, so we say, that me and Jake Roberts, well, he says he invented the DDT. 
Yeah. And I said, hell no, I'd been to DDT. Really? All right, so when me and Jake are together, we go, well, here's really what happened, okay? We were in, I, I thought it was Lake Charles, but it was a town called La Ronja, Louisiana, Louisiana, way down on the coast. And it was just a little, no, podunk town. Mm -hmm. But you used to have a packed crowd. But it was a metal building, like all rusted metal building, and it said, La Ronja Coliseum. <laughs> <laughs> and we used to go there, and we had to wrestle. This is when we were first. Jake wasn't Jake the Snake. I wasn't the grappler. I was Lynn Denton. He was Jake Roberts. So we were wrestling this match, and we're going at it, and we're sweating and all that. And he went to get a front face lock. His feet slipped out. He says I stepped on his foot. He said his feet slipped out, and mine slipped out, and we went down, whoom, just like a DDT. It was a total accident. And the crowd <laughs> burst, right? They go, boo, whoa. And I went, Jake, did you hear that? I said, okay, let's do it again. Is this what you're saying to each other while That's you're That's what wrestling? I told him. I said, yeah. let's do it again. I'm in thing. So I set out. I hit him with a tackle drop down. He kicks me. Boom, we did it again. They went crazy again. I went, Jeez, did you hear that, brother? He said, so then he started doing it. You know, for each town, and when we got to TV, I said, Jake, you need to save that for a finishing move. Yeah. It's too devastating. And that's how he kept it. He named it J uh, the DDT and all that. Yeah. But the original but it's all thing from an accident. was from an accident. At a rusty building. At a rusty old building and two tired, beat up wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you, you know, that's before he was Jake the Snake, before you were the grappler. Exactly, yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about the grappler. Like, how did you come up with your persona? Because that's something I think is always really interesting well, for any wrestler, I mean, or performer at all. Here was the problem. Coming up with their, the thing. You yeah, know? the thing with me was, okay, I had, I got, you know, I was I was skinny when I first started, 190 pounds, and I finally got the weight on, and, and, then, and then I got more looked like a man, so sort of a little kid, and then I got the size, and I had the wrestling ability, and I had the size that took for it, and I had to rap. I could always talk, right? But I had this plain face, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't ugly enough to scare nobody, <laughs> and I wasn't good looking enough to draw no women in, like a book salesman. But brother, when they put that boot on me and they had a loaded boot, you know, there's a secret about that weapon he's got in that boot, and they called me the grappler and they put that mask to give me a character. My career took off after that. That was it. Boom, that was it. That's all I needed. Then I could scare people. Yo, son of a get mad at me. And then yeah. that's when it took off. And that's how it became. That's how I became the grappler. And do you prefer being the heel or the, uh, the hero? Oh, the heel always. The heel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, more fun that way. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So you got the mask. I mean, you got the mask right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'll let you decide on when you want to put that on. But, um, but I want to talk about, you know, going into stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how, yeah. Do, how do you make that How do you make that? Well, what it was, was um, actually Piper was doing it. And I, me and Piper. That's true, yeah, I, that's right. We owned the Pit Stop Transmission Center, me and Roddy. Yeah. He put the money up, I ran it. And then, so we hung out together all the time when he was in town. And we, I knew him since I was 18 years old. Yeah. And so we know he's another wrestler, so we had a, the buddy sit the one. And so Did he, you know him from here or just from the I knew him from the road, yeah. from the road. And then I, and then I later on from here. And then um, Roddy goes, um, um, he says, he comes to me one day and says, look, I'm doing stand-up at Harvey's Comedy Club, you know? Yeah. Uh, Barry Colin owns the Harvey's Comedy Club and they're friends. And I said, he said, come watch it. I come check it out. I said, yeah, that's great, man. And so Roddy got to where he was getting ready to do some shows on the road. And he did a few. And, um, but they, were, they, weren't, they weren't impressed with it. They go, man, here's the thing. Piper goes up there and he's in the main event because he's the big WWE star. And he, he follows these two comedians that, that open up for him, and they blow him away because he ain't, they're funny. He ain't. Right. I say, yeah, because they're, we're not made to be comedians. I'm not. <laughs> I'm no storyteller. Right. I tell you what happened to me and Andre, or what happened to me and Dusty Rhodes, but some, something questions. they don't have. Yeah. But I don't know how to tell a joke like right. they do. I'm not a stand-up. So I'm not a stand-up comedian. Okay. So then they went like this. Co uh, uh, I call him Coach Barry Colin. He read my book. He goes, I didn't even realize you wrestled. I said, I wrestled as much as Roddy. He goes, you're the guy to open up for Roddy. So that's what I started doing. I, I got on it. I did like, I probably at least four months every Friday, Saturday, I'd open up for the comedians yeah. at Harvey's uh -huh. and drill and drill and drill. And finally, Roddy called and said, you ready to go? Coach said, you're ready. I said, I'm ready. And he died that night. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm I know. So God sorry. bless you. But anyway, that's how it all got came yeah, to be. That's how it all started. Yeah, I mean, and plus I was like, you know, this would give me an outlet to relate with the fans, even when I can't wrestle no more. Yeah. So continue it on, continue, continue it on. on. Yeah, and yeah, performing yeah. and getting that crowd interaction. So and yeah, and you get that yourself. thrill of being up there in front uh -huh. of the crowd. It's the same thing. Feeling that energy, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, you did mention something though. Now I have to ask uh, Andre the Giant. Andre, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wrestled Andre a few times, but I'm I mean, how? I, what yeah, is that? no, I mean, no. the guy's what seven? He is just brother. He handles you like two, a little kid, know. like a little kid. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, just. And so you he's aside. Main, main, mainly just a big oddity to everybody. Yeah. I remember looking at him, and I'd get him in a headlock. He say headlock, boss. If he liked you, he called you boss. He say headlock, boss. I, I could barely touch my fingers. It was head in there. But what he would do is grab me around the waist and start going, bam, ah, against my side, slapping my side like that. He'd have it beat red. I hear him, ho, ho, ho. And you try to tear it loose, and he'd hold on to you and let you go. I go, Andre, you're killing me. And <laughs> this is while you're in the ring wrestling. While you're in the ring yeah. wrestling, you're supposed to be having a headlock on him. Yeah. One time he shot me in at the Superdome for a backdrop, and he got he was excited. It was a big crowd there, you know. Uh -huh. Brother, I thought he launched me. I thought I was never coming down. <laughs> it's like, whoa, I hit, and I just crawled out of the ring, tagged out. I said, no. But he was, uh, if he liked you, you know, he he, he was fine with you. He, you know, he, yeah. was, he handled you good, but he didn't like you were in trouble. Yeah, and you were, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, <laughs> that's if he liked you. I tried to hide from him drinking one time. He liked to drink with me, you know, he liked to, he'd ride with me or where we go when he's in the area where I was at. Are the rumors true? Because I, I heard that he would drink like a case of beer or something. He'd like drink that. a case of wine on the way to the show. Wow. He wouldn't even buzz. Wow. And on the way home, he'd get a case of beer. But, I mean, I tried to, I hid from him one time. I was really hung over from drinking with Dick Murdoch the night before. Uh-huh. He found me, brother. I was in a trailer across the river in Baton Rouge. And this is the truth. It was at uh, Black Bart's house. I knew he had an extra bedroom. <laughs> so I hid. I ran. I didn't stay at my place. I went over there. Uh -huh. He found out somebody stooged me off and told me told him where I was at. Because he came and I woke up. I was laying there sleeping. And I woke up. He could barely fit his body, like his shoulders, into the room. And he turned the mattress over with me in it. When I got up, he chopped me back across it. I said, let me get my pants, boss. Hold on. <laughs> and we went out to the after hours club. Oh, my God. He tortured me. <laughs> you don't want to run and hide from Andre. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't, no. think I, I don't know if I could drink with no, Andre. No, sir. I, I didn't. I couldn't either. I was yeah. forced to. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's let's talk about tomorrow because this is what I want to emphasize. Yes. For everybody who's watching live, you know, you have a chance to go see the Grappler in person, uh, November eighteenth. <laughs> so that's Saturday, November eighteenth, at sure. the Hawthorne Hideaway. Yes, thank and, you. And and tell people what what can they expect. What can they expect like coming into this? Well, I'm I don't some, want to spoil anything. But. I'm going to have some good footage of wrestling, different times, yeah. things that they might remember, a jar some old memories, uh -huh. and pictures and stuff like that. And I want to tell stories. And also, Top Gun's going to be there. Good friend of mine, you know, we he wrestled towards the mass. He wrestled uh, as Top Gun here, and we had feuds all over all over the Northwest. Yeah. Oh, the country, matter of fact, but he's going to be on there. He's going to be doing some stories, his road stories too. He's got some footage. And then we're going to have a QA and a where people are going to ask us questions. Yeah. And so I think they enjoy it. I think the people will really enjoy it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I just saw somebody comment. Um, yeah. And they, they, they're saying this in a loving way. Always hated him. Great heel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, doing my yep. job. Yep, exactly. Doing, doing job. your job. Doing yeah, your job. Yeah. Whatever everybody wants. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. Well, uh, okay. I got to ask. You ready for the mask? Oh, yeah. I will. So I want to know what goes into you. What, what does it take? to transition from being Lenny, who I'm talking to right here, we're having a conversation, into hey. the guy that everybody, you know, okay. gets angry at, the grappler. So I'll, I'll put the mask on and I'll show you and we'll close it out. Okay, sounds good. That? Yeah, okay, so I'm with you. All right, here we go. <laughs> so I'm ready to go. And Kinda when this thing now. goes on, brother, get chopped <laughs> let me see. Is it, yeah, the roof, you can probably, you ain't gonna hit the roof. Let's we'll see. Cheer, I'm gonna wanna move this chair out of the way. Oh, no. No, I'm oh, kidding, boy. I'm kidding. I ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> That's what Joe B used to do to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which, real quick. Yeah. Before you do that, just uh -huh. to show everybody an example here. Yeah. That's uh, the grappler with Joe V. Oh, cool. That's so cool. Here at the Fox 12 Oregon studio. So this is this is where Portland, this Portland wrestling was filmed, and this uh, right over there. Like, yeah, that is like so cool. 40 feet away from me right now. <laughs> um, it's amazing. But Good uh, deal. that's the grappler then. And this is what's left of him? <laughs> this is what's left of him, okay, folks? But let me tell you something, Craig, okay? Come here, brother. Uh -oh. I'm going to be at the Hawthorne Hideaway, okay? I want all you fans yes, to sir. come out there and see the greatest show you've ever seen of Russ, and we're going to tell all them old-time stories. We're going to be signing autographs, selling pictures, selling masks, selling books. We're going to do it all. You fans show up if you are a fan of Portland Wrestling. And remember one thing. 
They got a name for you when you're the greatest wrestler in wrestling today. They don't call you a great wrestler. They call you the grappler. Beat me if you can. I don't know what else we do after that. <laughs> <laughs> the Grappler. Thank you, thank you. Right very here much, sir. on Fox 12 now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And, then, and then he walks off, and then that's it, you know? I'm blown up, Jay. <laughs> I assume I'm going to get a DDT here, so that's why I'm a little nervous. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is Fox 12 now. We're going to take a break. <laughs> We're back you, here at 1.30. We've got Alan Tudyk, who's going to be on, talking about his movie, uh, Wish. No so uh, all that, and of course, breaking news. This is Fox 12 now. <laughs>